start. Uh, <clears throat> so, self inquiry that is going on in our topic. Self inquiry means we inquire into the real nature. And we have already heard the story of Narada, how he evolved. He became one of the great masters. So now we are listening to him, what he is saying. He is saying that there are four roots of extreme weaknesses in our life. Four roots of extreme weaknesses in our life. Before that, let us understand the delusion. Delusion is a presence of extreme incompleteness in the mind and the intellect. <clears throat> I feel a sense of totally incompleteness. It has nothing to do with <clears throat> how much you earn and how much the wealth you have. No, it has nothing. Extreme sense of incompleteness. And that is not seeing. And it takes the shape of, shape of a delusion outside. How come? We are deadly influenced by 100 or 120 pounds. Did you get it? What is the body weight? Maybe 80 pounds, 100 pounds, 120 pounds. We are deadly influenced by this 120 pounds. <laughs> Take it 150 pounds, you know. No one has 150 pounds. What that means? That we get identified with the body. And this in this body, the commander in chief, that is the ego, supported by the strong likes and dislikes, preferences of the joy and the sorrow, and, and hatred and the jealousy starts ruling. How come? It is because of the delusion. And what I said? Delusion is an extreme sense of incompleteness in me. So our focus remains on the body. What it means? I am the body. Then what happens? I forget what is, what is the real nature. What is existence? What is right and proper? What is in right and good things to think, to speak and act in our life? You see how I connected this? <clears throat> There's 120 or 150 pounds of this body. I am the body. We don't say it. But there is an extreme sense of incompleteness that comes due to the identification of the body. That is the cause of the delusion. What happens? Endless suffering. You see, I have all the possessions, and I'm still suffering. And this commander-in-chief creates a chaos within me first, and then it is expressed outside. We become obsessed consumers. We forget about contributing in any manner. That's why you see, nobody tells you how much you earn. <laughs> how much, you know, how much you have. Oh, no, no, that's a different matter, you know. Who knows, you know, if I say I have $100,000 in my account, oh, can you can you share 50000 with me? <laughs> we never tell anyone. <laughs> We don't share even, you know, you know, to our partners, whom we love. 
what happens? Again, remember, extreme sense of incompleteness <coughs> because of identification with the body. And because of that identification, I forget what is my real nature. I forget the existence from where everything is coming. That mind is not ready to think, to listen, and to follow what is right and good and proper in our daily life. It's dissatisfaction, insecurity, unhappiness is always present in us. Now what the Narada says, based on that fact of delusion, Narada says that desire, hesitation, repeat desire, that is greed, and the fear are the four root weaknesses present in the human being. Four root weaknesses. But he had his own experience and he revealed those weaknesses. I told you the story. He has a monkey face, hesitation. Do you remember? Repeat desire. Instead of doing what is right and good, he should have left that. <clears throat> Instead of leaving, he said, no, I should have. I should possess this girl. But it was also supported by the fear. So Narada takes us to an, another level to understand our human psychology. And that he tells a, a new story. He tells a good story. Because of that incomplete sense of, what I said, incomplete sense of, sense of incompleteness in us. Because I identify with the body. What happens? Sometimes I say, for example, uh, unexpected money returns. I enjoy that. I celebrate it. I forget myself. But let us go to the story first. So there is a good story that uh, he tells. <clears throat> So the Supreme God has arranged a talk about mental purification. So not everyone could, uh, could attend the session, as some people have left today's session. They might be busy. So. Supreme God invited one representative from the filthy rich people, normal human being, and those people who always blame and complain. Or you can say they are demons. So normally it says deva, demons, and human being. Lecture started, the Supreme God said to the people with all the possessions, all kinds of possessions and the pleasure they are enjoying, they forget their real nature. So in Sanskrit, he said the word da. Da, you have to follow da. He told the demons, you have to follow da. And to the human beings, he said, you have to follow da. So they went to their family and they said, we did not understand. So they invited their masters, their respective masters. So now see that that is what, once we understand this and we live, we start changing, modifying our life based on this, the life will change. Four root weaknesses. So in first, da means daya. First, no. First, da means dumb. 
and Sanskrit word dham means discipline. I should not be overpowered by any form of a pleasure in any situation, in any relationship. So I have to discipline and take over the mind. Mind should not take over me. He's not talking about suppression. Four root weaknesses, desire, hesitation, or the stress or anxiety, duality in a conflict that keeps on in the mind. The third is the repeat desire or a sense of greed. So to the demons, because demons, they always create a chaos in the family. A person is a demon in the family who always blames and complains in a society, in a nation, because their mind is look, still looking for to fill the sense of incompleteness. The entire world is crazy except me. We have those attitudes at times. No, I, I don't agree with you. Without thinking, without reflecting, without understanding. And the third, so to the demons, he said, Daya. Daya means compassion. We'll discuss in detail. And the third one is for the human beings. The advice to the human beings is done, contributing contributing why he said this he said this tendency of being rich we all have that idea and the thought in our mind tendency of being rich means what it starts with the body <coughs> 120 pounds body wants to be rich can you tell me that can this wealth go beyond the body? Any amount of wealth. Are you getting it? Say yes. This any amount of wealth, any object, all the objects of pleasure, it pertains to the physical life. Are you not happy now? Are you not relaxed now? So the tendency of being rich, obsessed with the pleasure, getting uncontrolled, emotional dependence, we equal ourselves. Now I live in heaven with the sense of incompleteness. And that sense of incompleteness causes a lot of worries. Tendency of being demon also comes to. Now, I don't agree with you. Let me divorce you. Enough is enough. We take an instant decision without even thinking what is going on in my mind. How come I'm deluded? I had, I, 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 I labeled you as a soulmate. Now I label you as a soulmate. Let me think first. Let me contemplate and reflect. Let me be very clear. No, we don't think about it. We just take an instant decision. And of being a human, we have already learned that how to become the best consumer. We become even, you know, I, I heard that, you know, people go for a window shopping. You see? We are so much obsessed. So we are, so as long as now you see, as long as we are obsessed with the pleasure, are always blaming and complaining, and always we are a consumer, we continue to have these four weaknesses. You cannot get rid of this. Think of this. Contemplate. Contemplate. And the remedy the Narada gives, <clears throat> what the remedy the Narada offers with these three? Discipline. <clears throat> what is discipline? What is right and good? My intellect can think. 
what is right and good. Ah, uh, pasta is so tasty. Let me take one more. What is right and good? <coughs> My stomach says it is full. Oh, take one more. Uh, this item is on sale. Oh, let me grab it. How many shirt I have? Ten. Oh, but it is on sale, so I should buy it. That thinking pattern, that emotional dependence demands a discipline. So Dhamma, uh, normally English translation of Dhamma is restrained, but it is not restrained, it is not controlling. I have to understand, contemplate, and reflect, and find out in your life. And I can tell you, 99% of the people have what they need. So what has happened? It is overpowered by the delusion. Why it is overpowered by the delusion? This 150 pounds of the this body is me. Think. You will find the same solution. You will arrive at the same conclusion. You have 10 billion dollars. Can you relax your mind? <laughs> there is a more insecurity. More fear. One guy from the New Jersey, uh, she sends me the check. She says, no, it's not fair. Now, I, I will never go online. Why if, if some, some scam takes place? Second is the daya, compassion. Those who always blame and complain and think how we are the best we have to change. And we are the best. Again, it refers, identifies with the body. I come to your house, and if you don't praise and appreciate me, I get hurt. This happens with our honey. This happens in the society. This happens with the possession of a particular car. This happens with the possessing a home, this happens with the clothes, this happens with everything. And that outside, what is present outside, identifies with the body. Can you imagine that how deeply we identify with this 100 or 120 pounds of the body? Then what happens? The sense of forgetfulness comes. In that sense of forgetfulness, we don't know who we are. So we, we choose one path, one path of being undisciplined. Now obsessed with different kinds of pleasure. That is being undisciplined. I do not have a time to think what is right and good in my life. If that is one path, the second path I choose, blame and complain. So obviously when you blame and complain, you accumulate the sins and you are always stressed. It's an extreme rajasic activity. And the third, I, I am, the moment I wake up in the morning, I am a consumer. I am not a contributor. I do not connect with anyone with a sense of kindness, with a sense of affection, but I connect with everyone, with anyone, with any object. As a consumer, that's why I'm consumed. That needs to be understood clearly. <coughs> For the demons, that anger is always present. Those who blame and complain, that sense of anger is always present. That anger manifests as a blame, as a complaint, as a reaction, as a duality, as a conflict. And ultimately, we fall back into the disease. Four root weaknesses, 
four root weaknesses. One is the desire. So when we talk of the desire, it is unbind. It is a binding desire. We have to restrain. When the desire is binding, <clears throat> desire is only binding when the mind confirms that I am the body, unconsciously, habitually, impulsively. And then we become, there is no discipline. hesitation or mind is constantly wandering it is not at rest and that sense of hesitation creates an anger in me how come everything should be my way how come that my way comes because of likes and dislikes find out you will come to the same conclusion it comes because of the likes and dislikes Joy. Why? Why I like something because it gives me a joy. Why I dislike something because it gives me a sorrow. But from where the likes and dislike comes, because of the delusion. And second thing, I want to consume sugar, but now sugar is a poison for me because I'm suffering from diabetes. So he points out the three pointed method, a discipline. Discipline means I become conscious of what I am doing, what I should do, what I should not do. How simple it is. So I have to start thinking. No outer advice can help you reach to that. When you start thinking, then only you rise in awareness, you reflect on it, and then your intellect says, no, this, you know, it creates a, some, some doubt. No, 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 I should not do this. I should do this. So that is the first discipline, and that is why we have covered that. I will be covering it again. The second is uh, <clears throat> the hesitation and anger. So that hesitation and anger, blame and complaint game has to be dealt with Compassion, repeat desire. Repeat desire is nothing but the greed. And it again pertains to the body. And the fourth is the fear. You have to sit down the moment you have any form of a fear. Uh, how can I, you know, if someone invites you to give a talk for two minutes, what happens? We start trembling with the fear. Source is commander in chief. My ego will be hurt if I do not speak correctly, if people do not appreciate. So it is a fear of unknown. There is no fear of a known. Whatever we know, there is no fear. Whatever we do not know, it is the fear of the unknown. And that fear of the unknown has a basis in the delusion. Has its very strong base in the delusion. You want to listen more? So now see that what happens. Superimpose, that is why we use the word that over the real self, I superimpose the body, this is me. So first there is an I thought, and that I thought claims I am the body, and that I am the body is superimposed over the real self, are the pure consciousness and then once we have superimposed i am the body then i commander in chief or the ego takes supports from the likes and dislikes from the joy and the sorrow from from hatred and jealousy that contains all the three areas 
how to deal with the desire, hesitation, and repeat desire. Now, if you get rid of all the three, what happens? The mind is free. Otherwise, what happens? Mind lives in us. We do not live our life. We are led by the mind. This is the meaning of we are led by the mind. And when we are led by the mind, what happens? You wake up in the morning, how many hours you slept? 10 hours. I'm still, still hangover, still tired. You do a particular activity, you are totally exhausted. You find a sense of reaction and hesitation. I should not have done this. I should have done this. Honey doesn't listen to me. I will try again if he or she follows my way. They all have a root in the delusion. This is one way to understand. And this delusion, I said, this 120-pound body says, oh, you don't listen to me? You don't follow me? You don't appreciate me? You see, this body, this body is in delusion. This 120 or 150 pounds of the body, body carry the burden of the entire universe in relationship, in situation, in different conditions of life. So when we constantly contemplate and reflect on that vicious cycle created in the mind by an I thought, identified with the body, causes the delusion, results into suffering. I spoke a big sentence. I think it makes me you understand that. Last point you have to see how deeply the, this master has gone into our human cycle. He had a failure. He was suffering. He suffered in the previous story, but now he came with that understanding. And it is accepted by all the great masters. Let us start our journey. <clears throat> Eyes are closed. Eyes are closed. Body is comfortable. Are you ready for meditation, the position of the body? Check it. So we are getting out of that delusion. How? By the knowledge and by the practice. How simple it is. So position of the body, eyes are closed. How fast you can settle? How fast you can be, be comfortable? Why I said how fast? You are always comfortable in real self. You are always uncomfortable in the body. <laughs> Think. The moment somewhere a slight identification with the body causes a great disaster in our life. And that also indicates that we are a seeker. Or we are not a seeker. Are you still struggling with the body, breath, mind, position? What struggle means? That struggle is a demon. That is what we discussed in the story. What it does, blame, complaints. If I say that I am the body, then only I complain. That's a little deeper. So now, Sarvesham Swastir Bhavatu. We are giving a direction to the mind that is deluded by a mantra with the knowledge. Sarvesham Swastir Bhavatu. 
Sarvesham Swastir Bhavatu. Let there be happiness for all. So in the presence of delusion in the mind, we are asking the mind to understand that the happiness is our essential nature. You can seek that happiness within, and which is the essential nature of every living species. That is why we all are seeking happiness in our life. Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Let there be peace for all. Are you looking for peace? Do you have an extreme sense of incompleteness in you? And there comes the mantra, says, no, peace is already within you, what you are searching outside. That will create the four root weaknesses in your life. Just, just see. So you are reflecting on it with the mantra, and mind starts settling down. It drops the binding desire. What is unbinding desire? Desire for happiness within me. Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Now see that, what he says. May there be completeness in all. And what is the cause, what is delusion? A sense, a feeling, a thought, an action, an idea of extreme incompleteness at thinking, at speaking, at acting level. Now you see another dimension of this mantra. So when it says that, may there be completeness in all, I have to analyze, observe, reflect. Good. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu What happens then? When that extreme sense of incompleteness with which is delusion caused by the identification of the body identification with the body superimposes on the real self, causes the suffering, is gone. Then what is that moment? That moment is auspicious. So every moment is auspicious moment, minus delusion in our life. I believe you are getting it, those who have been attending it regularly. That is, that is what it is. So recheck your settled in comfort behind and beyond, beyond the current state of the mind. We means what? I'm using different phrases to help your mind digest and assimilate. What I used to say that you're looking at the body, ah oh, yes, physical awareness. Then I said, move the mind within an experience, sensation, comfort and steadiness that is another stage of rise in awareness, is moving the mind within. Move the mind further, deeper within, you find the space. Space is awareness, and awareness is space. And in that space, or awareness of the space, we find now, at a subtler level, the lane one, we have a lot of the thoughts are coming and going. I can tell you, if you are not consciously thinking in the direction of the self-discovery, if you are not, the rest of the thoughts comes from the delusion. Give me any thought. That ignorance has such a great 
influence on our daily living. So that is why I said lane one unwanted, or they are unwanted, unwelcome. Whatever the thoughts, even it comes, they may seem to be a good thought. But if I consciously think, think that becomes a thought pattern, is the lane two. I have to think. Contemplate and reflect. So that very thinking becomes a product of knowledge and that moves me into the lane three. That is what the calmness and the peace is. Understand, my friends. So we are carefree and now is the time, now is the time to start our purification. Mantra also purifies the mind. So you are looking deep inside the forehead in the space, pick a point in the space and drop Om Shanti, pause, Om Shanti, pause. So we are, we are one compartment of the mind is dropping the Om Shanti and the second, consciously you start breathing consciously into the rib case. Om Shanti continues, breathing continues, expansion and contraction of the rib case continues. <clears throat> Continue. You are aware of expansion and contraction of the rib case. You are aware of the sensation, comfort, and steadiness of the body. You are aware of the Om Shanti you are dropping. You are aware of the point in the space. What is common? Awareness. Am I not aware of all the parts of the body? Yes, same way. And that takes time. Because of the delusion, it doesn't happen in a day. And stop it, recognize, accept the changes and the experiences you are having at this time. Also recognize the resistance to the step in the practice. Also recognize a sense of forgetfulness of Om Shanti while breathing. There are many steps. Why we are doing it? We are uprooting that sense of incompleteness caused by the identification with the body, declaring I am the body, results into the delusion. 
Let us start with the second breathing, the valley breathing. Om Shanti continues. Remember the expansion and contraction of the belly. Now you are aware. You fill the breath into the belly. You take the breath out. That is a symbolic expression. You are not filling the air into the belly. Some people will object to it. You know, look at this crazy guy, how he is guiding. No, it is a symbol. You are still filling the air into the lungs but it is the lower lobes of the lungs that expands the belly that's a totally different thing that we will talk about it why we do it and om shanti continues you are conscious of expansion of the belly during inhalation you are you are Continue. And stop it, recognize, accept the changes. Also recognize the resistance that you experience that comes from the mind. Delude it because of identification with the body. And experience the changes, vision, colors, calmness, freshness. Mind is absorbed deeper inside. All are good. Even cognition of resistance is good because I cognize now. I recognized. Looking inside again, deep inside the forehead. Om Shanti continues, body remains in the same state. Now start breathing long, deep in the hissing breath, both from the belly and the rib case. Long, deep, <clears throat> and the hissing breath.
continue the long in the hissing breath, both from the belly and the rib place, Om Shanti continues deep inside the forehead in the space, the body remains in that state of stillness. And now stop this, do nothing. When you do nothing, you are aware of the body. So body means what? Sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Sensation may be of any type, it doesn't matter. Check that. Sensation, relaxation, and stillness. How deeply you are relaxed, helps you to de-identify, de-identify with the body. That is why we want this step, my friends. De-identification takes place in deep sleep. Now, as I usually say, look inside the body means rise in awareness. So first we experience the sensation all over the body. It is a rise in consciousness, a conscious sensation. It is the state of the calmness. So what happens in the state of the calmness, my friends? We go too far we go too far from the thoughts that identifies with the body. So at maybe at a subtler level, at present we do not appreciate, but at a subtler level we are de-identifying. And the space inside the body is quietness, quietude. In quietness, we go too far from the thoughts pertaining to the body and the world. It is the same thing. Just check it. Do you have that conscious awareness or experience, if I say so? where you see that the mind is not ready to pick up any thought that is too far to be identified. These, they are there, they will remain present. If they do not represent, they do not, they are not present, then we are dead, then we are unconscious, yes. They are too far. They are too far that gives a sense of quietness. When we have that state of the mind, the next step of the triangle works deeply. So in that state, you are looking inside the cave of your heart, visualize the triangle in any color equilateral triangle pointing upward. And again, I, I divided it into parts, you know, for the sake of understanding. Awareness of the side of a triangle, awareness of dropping Om Shanti, 
and moving the mind on the side in the state of sensation, relaxation and stillness moving the mind with Om Shanti on the sides of a triangle clockwise, anti-clockwise and check you sink what do you mean by the sink? whenever you say Om Shanti mind moves on one side Om begin begins at one corner of the side ends with the Shanti there's a perfect sink sink so that is another moment in our rise in awareness. Maybe later we need not to do anything with the triangle. We are discovering, means what? Mind can live into that state. It is there inside. And once you find there is a kind of a sink, you Move, now you push the mind. I reverse the position. Singing Om is pushing the mind deeper inside the cave of heart. Mind seemingly stops. When you see seemingly stops, you drop Shanti. And then do nothing. So you are recognizing that the deeper and the higher states of the mind can naturally can naturally live in that state seemingly seemingly as if it has stopped. So that conscious cognition is silence. I added another dimension in the journey and that is very subtle. How do I recognize the subtle when my mind is subtle? And now leave the step, go to the Japa. You already know. But only difference, mind's eye looks at the segment of the index finger, mind's skin touch that. Mind's ear listens, mind's tongue speaks. So all the senses remain in the mind, dropping on Shanti. It instantly triggers variety of sensations. See, what are these sensations? The movement of the prana, the life force. So what happens that the mind and the prana merge together. They still remember, I think everyone must be remembering desire is the impurity of prana in the mind. So what we are doing with the prana? 
we are saying to come with the mind that is at present pure. And that prana is liberated from the identification of the body rises up. Up means rise in consciousness. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Oh, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand. Lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes. Open the eyes inside the palms. Know your experiences. Bring the hands down. We'll share our experiences. If you have any question, <clears throat> obviously you are free to ask. How are you, Stephen? Uh, good. Thank you. Um, I uh, I struggled uh, with the body and getting comfortable in the beginning, um, but as soon as you started um, the first verse of the Sarve Sham again. It was as if a, a light switch just shut off, and I all forgotten about. I've just went into this very dark space. Um, recalled not um, starting the fast breathing right away, um, but on the opposite side of that, the long, um, extended hissing breathing um, I sustained through the remainder of the meditation. Um, while still being uh, cognizant of the triangle, um, the japa, and everything along the way. And then I was like, oh, wow, I'm still actually hissing here. So um, that, that was it. It was just very, very calm and settled right now. Beautiful. You are revealing one secret that needs to be clearly understood. Perhaps you might have overlooked. 
what he said the moment he started the mantra, that uncomfortable state dissolved. What it means? The knowledge alone can remove the ignorance. We are relying more on the active steps like breathing, like stretching. Mind has to take over the body. Body should not dominate over the mind. Are you getting? So that knowledge means that just in, in, a, in a just in a moment of that awareness, the moment that knowledge says, I am not the body. How? By the mantra. Or by just an awareness. So that state signifies that I am a seeker. And that is one reason that he continued doing the long, the third breathing, without noticing, without any objection of the mind. That needs to be understood. Beautiful. Stephen, how are you, Dennis? I'm fine, Guruji. Thank you. Uh, the, the meditation was uh, calm and quiet as usual. One per, uh, peculiar thing that I uh, noticed today that after the breathing, the space uh, was all colored blue for some reason. That never happened yeah. before. Um, and um, yeah, the, the the rest of the meditation and japa went as usual. No, 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 nothing to add. Yes, we will understand that. We will understand. I have just created these. Uh, what you say? Not I have created. It's all teachings of the masters. Whenever I say I word, you replace it with the masters. Need not. So what happens is the journey uh, of the mind, starting from being comfortable, then being carefree, then sensation, relaxation, and stillness, then calmness and quietness, then peace. So when that state of the peace is recognized by the mind, you have a very deep blue color. I'm just now I will talk about these colors and the wisdoms. So we have to still go deeper. Beautiful way to narrate, Dennis. And how are you, Brandy? Good morning. I'm fine. Thank you. Um, I came into the meditation with a lot of identification with the name and the form. So your lesson and the meditation were really useful. And Bringing me back. Bringing you back. Very good. Now we know what identification that we talked yesterday. So need not to. That's really good. If you drop the identification, that is better. How are you, Terry? You are not the body. I um I can't oh I conscious consciously followed yes all the uh the, the te te yep. te and and the step uh, and i achieve i momentarily achieve uh the liberation good and uh, thank you don't we speak too much you are now i have to that we will cover in in gita as we are approaching to this you see that <clears throat> this body is carbohydrate protein this is a matter understand it clear this is a matter but how come it is moving who gives the force who gives the power to this matter to move Think of it. Yeah. Who gives the power to move? 
so that we are so what i want to convey to you guys that you know guys in india means cows <laughs> <laughs> so so we have to explore this complexity this matter how this matter my finger is moving lips are moving larynx is moving and coming out it is acting so consciousness and livens in the body it does not mean if it does not enliven the body we are not the real self so how i'm relating it to what the state of the terry because of her problem because she is not able to express it does not mean she does not know what has happened to her mm -hmm. So that real self, that calmness, that peace is still there. That needs to be understood. We will talk. How are you, Barbara? Working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, uh, it was a beautiful meditation for me. Uh, during during the meditation, it seemed like everything had stopped. I didn't feel my body, I didn't have any thoughts, and I was completely yeah. at peace. Beautiful. When my mind says I don't have the body, it does not mean the body will go anywhere. <laughs> that indicates, you know, the sense of bodylessness. So the more we experience the sense of bodylessness, or we experience the same blueness, or we experience through the knowledge, that sense of uncomfort dissolves. They all remove our delusion. What is the delusion? Huh? This 150 pounds of the body rules the world. <laughs> we don't know the, what is the weight of this earth. And yes, Sangeeta, how are you? Uh, बहुत पीसफुल था और सर आज शुरू में थोड़ा लेन वन में जा रहा था मन पर अपने आप ही लेन टू लेन थ्री में लेन थ्री में हाँ लेन वन में ज्यादा जा रहा है क्योंकि पैसे ज्यादा आ गए इसलिए नहीं सर मेरे पास कुछ नहीं है मेरे पास कोई पैसे नहीं है her mind is jumping to the lane one again and again in the end she succeeded so think of it the next topic will be you have to uh, just contemplate and reflect we will directly talk about the delusion how come this delusion enters in our life and causes causes the problem this is again teaching from the narada and what happens when the delusion enters all grief all suffering in our life directly indirectly consciously unconsciously habitually in instinctively impulsively they enter into our life that is all for today we'll talk about we'll meet again next week thank you very much we will